you're a mom looking to scale your real estate business but struggling with balancing family, this video is going to completely blow your mind and give you the blueprint of how to skyrocket your production while still managing the balance of your family. So today I'm bringing on a very special guest, Carrie Bio, who is a mother of four young kids as well as a spouse, and she has done 46 transactions within the last 12 months while still balancing her family and only working about five hours every single day. And she's going to be breaking down her blueprint of exactly how she's doing massive volumes in production while still making sure that she attends all of the important aspects of raising her kids and being a spouse. Carrie's going to be breaking down how she leverages nurturing her sphere and her database, how she prospects and fills her pipeline on a daily basis, her complete schedule so that you can build this in and have no excuses as to why you're not where you want to be in business when raising a young family, as well well as everything that she's doing with a showing agent and systems in order to make the production of her business hyper efficient so that you can model this for your business. Now, as always, before bringing on Carrie, I'm going to mention two quick things. Number one, I'm going to be linking all of Carrie's social media platforms below so that you can see exactly what she's doing and get an idea of what you can do for your business. And also I'm going to link her calendar link below in case you want to talk to her one on one and get her free support in order to help scale your business this year. So this is truly an incredibly valuable video that I'm grateful to bring to you. And without further ado, let's bring on Carrie and show you how to build not only massive production, but increase the profitability while still balancing your beautiful family. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. And today we've got on a very special guest that I'm really excited to bring to you because it's going to relate to so many of you that are getting started in real estate as a mom. So we've got on Carrie B.O. and she's an absolute rock star where she ended up partnering with us, capping within the first four months, hitting icon status within just nine months, and has become one of the top producers in her entire market very quickly while balancing four beautiful young children. So really excited to dive into how Carrie has become a super mom, done massive production while still having a very incredible harmony and balance with her family. So Carrie, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. I'm I'm excited to have you on here. We've talked about this for a while now. It's, you know, finally coming to fruition and it's just been absolutely amazing to see your posts on a monthly basis of the production that you're doing, ranking on all the top producer charts here at EXP and just absolutely crushing it while balancing so much at the same time. So to give people some context as to where this all started, you previously had a path as a TC. So I'd love for you to give people just an idea or an understanding as to, you know, what did that previous position look like and what kind of got you into full-time real estate? Okay. Yeah. Um, so I was doing TC work for probably about five years. I got into the business in 2015. I kind of started out trying to do my own sales, but then um, I got pregnant with my second, had him. Um, he was in the hospital for a while, real sick. So I just decided to kind of take some time off and focus on my children Ended up having number three and four. So just really spent some time at home with them. Um, I partnered with a top producing agent here in Lafayette. Um, he was great, worked for him for quite a few years. Um, but I just kind of, my kids got older. I was doing showings for him, inspections. I was still running all over town for him. Um, and then I was just thinking, I can do this on my own. I'm still bringing kids to showings. I'm just juggling everything. Um, so I ended up putting them, my youngest, in daycare last year, I guess the end of the year. My older ones were able to go to school at that point. And then I just kind of started grinding, reaching out to my sphere, um, doing open houses. I did door knock my subdivision and kind of started farming that, got three listings out of it, just connecting with people, really. That's super powerful. It's it's incredible to see that, you know, you've continued to add to the family over this time while still building your business. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll dive into that because a lot of people are in that position. And, you know, this is not for better or worse, but I find just through a lot of conversations with people is, is that they use the family as a crutch as to why they're not succeeding. Whereas you found the ability to balance having the successful family and the successful business, which I think is incredibly beautiful and powerful. So you know, let's talk about that transition a little bit. 
as to going from TC to then realtor, you know, what did that look like for you in terms of a schedule? Because I think understanding your schedule is going to be a really powerful aspect before we dive into um, how you approach your sphere, how you built your sphere and what you did with um, open houses and, and you're, you know, doing incredibly well on Facebook and, and social media as well. But for a mom of four, what does your schedule look like and what it did it look like and what does it look like now um, that you've got the four kids, but still massive amounts of production? So before, whenever I was working TC, I'd kind of drop the older two off. I still had two at home at that point. And I would just, you know, I'd be on my computer, but while entertaining them at the same time. So it was, it was actually very difficult, a lot of multitasking. Um, and I actually went to an investing course because I also invest in real estate. I have some Airbnbs. I flip a couple homes a year. So I was really big into that. And I went to a, an investing course and I, they were just kind of asking about production and stuff. And I told them, the teacher of the class at that time that I was doing TC work, but I was going to try to sell on my own. And she just looked at me and she said, you cannot do both. Like you really need to choose. You're not going to succeed doing both. So at that point, like I kind of really thought about it and just decided to give up the TC work. Um, I actually had an agent that I was working for at the time tell me that I was going to fail, uh, that I wasn't going to get anywhere. And so that just kind of lit a fire under me um, to prove her wrong, you know? Um, so at that point I gave up all the part-time TC work, just focused on my own, my own production. And I was able to sell, I think I did a little over 10 and a half million last year, flipped two homes and added three doors to our rental portfolio all while, you know, balancing my kids are nine, seven, five, and my little one just turned three. That's absolutely so incredible. Schedule, I get up in the morning. My husband of course leaves before any of us even wake up. So I don't really have any help in the mornings with them. So we do, you know, breakfast, get ready, get dressed, get out the door, get your bags, pack lunches, all that. I have three different drop-offs, um, three different schools between all four of them. So it takes me about an hour in the morning to drop everyone off. I don't get to the office until probably 830. And then I have to leave at 215 to do pickups. So. Wow. That's, I'm that's incredible. Part -time doing a, um, doing the high production. So I wanted to just share with other moms and show them how it's possible. Definitely. No, this is, this is something that I know it's going to really connect with people. And, and I think, you know, it, it's, it's crazy to, to just see the extent of the fact that you've got multiple drop-offs and all of these different things. And, and again, I think it's beautiful to look at the fact that, and we'll unpack this a little bit, but you must be hyper-productive between that kind of nine and two time frame after you drop yes. them off and pick them up. Yeah, you have to be because, um, you know, a lot of times you can get to the office and you can be busy, but are you actually being productive? So I really have to focus my time on being efficient and productive during my my time. So what does that look like for you in terms of, I know we talk about sphere. I know that on the weekends you absolutely crush open houses, but on the average day, what does that look like for maybe another mom or yourself that is doing the morning routine? You've got the afternoon, late afternoon, evening routine, that kind of power hours in the middle where you're home and you're working on the average day. What does that look like for you in order to continue to move that needle of your business every day? So I get to the office and I try to do um, consistent lead generation for two hours a day because um, by 2.15, I have to leave and we do the whole homework routine in the afternoon, extra extracurricular activities, all that. My daughter's in dancing, my son's in baseball, just all over. Um, so I try to schedule my appointments in the evening when my husband's home or on the weekends. Um, and once I got to a point where I was at a high level of production last year, um, I did hire an assistant. I hired a showing assistant. Um, I think those are must-haves when you're when you're selling at such a high level and have multiple children. Um, I don't think I could have done it without it. So I really want to just say leverage is key in this business when you get to that point, of course. Um, in the beginning, it was it was pretty crazy. I wasn't home a lot. I was just all over, all over the place. Sometimes I'd have to bring my kids. I don't suggest it. Um but sometimes you have to. And once you meet a client and form that connection with them and they trust you and they like you and you have to bring your kid to a showing, most of the time they understand. Um, but that's I try not to do that because, you know, you want to focus on your client in the home and not having your baby running all over the place. So 
the showing assistant has been a huge help. Of course. As well of as course. the VA. Yeah, we'll definitely dive into that. And I think, you know, looking at that window of time, I just really want to get some clarity on that. You know, when you sit down at the office and you start diving into lead generation, what have you done in order to generate leads? And what does that two hour window of lead gen look like for you? So I utilize KV Core a lot. Um, I started out, I was with Keller Williams the beginning of the year. And then when I, you know, came to the EXP and the Wolfpack, we got the amazing CRM of KV Core. Um, so I do use that a lot. Um, I add people in it daily. I try to add um, about five a day, make phone calls for two hours. Um, I try to cater to my sphere a lot, just reach out to them, uh, just call them and ask them how they're doing. Um, you don't necessarily have to call them and ask for business, just have a conversation with them. So that's what I kind of do. I do pop buys too. Um, I do client events throughout the year for my clients. I'll do... Um, like mass text to all my past clients. Like for Christmas, I did a Starbucks gift card, um, just making them feel appreciated. Definitely. And just stay connected with them throughout the year. I think that's super powerful. All of, the, all of those touch points. And, and before we start diving into some of the other things you do within that window of time, when you're cold calling people and when you're adding these five people a day to your database, which I think, again, is, is a really powerful thing in itself, because a lot of people think you need to add hundreds of people a day to build this sphere and to build a pr you know high production. But it's more about the small things and hitting singles every day and just being consistent with something that's small that compounds over time into something more significant. So when you're making these calls, where are you calling? Is it FISBOs, expireds, or you know, just overall uh, market? What are you doing in the cold calling uh, time frame? Um, so I do call FISBOs every now and then. I do call expireds. Um, open house clients that I've gotten in the past that sign in, I call them. Um, I've have gotten lists on from, uh, I do have a marketing person I hired this year as well. So he helps me to like, you know, purchase lists and stuff that I go through, uh, distressed homes, vacant landlords, stuff like that. So I do call on people like that, but I'm also in, on the investing side. So, um, I do, I kind of do both because I do, you know, I always try to find properties to flip or purchase as rentals too. Um, and I have gotten listings out of cold calling for investing. So it kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah, I think that's a super cool kind of alignment. And we see that all the time. That's what I did in the beginning as well, because, you know, typically people that are going to look to sell their property as an investment, um, if there's an opportunity to exit at a market price and not sell at a discount, it becomes a listing. So that's a really cool kind of synergy between residential and investing. Now, yeah. you've crushed it with open houses. So let's yeah. talk about that for a second in terms of Obviously, again, I love that you said the word leverage. So it's near and dear to my heart because it's how I like to build business with video content is it creates massive leverage. Now, before we get to the leverage point of how you built your kind of, you know, team in that intimate group, open houses, you know, how often were you doing open houses? How did you identify the open houses? And did you say anything in the open houses to actually get clients from them? Because a lot of people, what I find is they go to open houses, they sit there for three hours, people come and go. And if they're mm -hmm. interested, that's great. If they're not, they leave. And they're kind of just a sitting duck for like three hours. And you've managed right. to make it very productive. So let's talk about what your open house routine looked like. Um, So I was trying to do one to two a week, um, one on the weekend and maybe like a Thursday evening um, when it got dark late, of course, once it started getting dark at five, I, I don't really do them during the week, but I would try to do one during the week and one on the weekends. Um, I'm pretty picky about my open houses. I won't just do any that some agent asked me to do. Um, I like to do houses that are staged. I like to do houses that have professional pictures. If they have phone pictures, I'm not going to go and do an open house on them and market to my uh, social media following. I'm just not going to do that. Um, they have to be in a good area. Um, I like to do newly listed and homes that are priced right that I know that will move quick. Um, so that strategy has kind of helped me a lot. And then I just like to provide some value to the people coming in. Um, I'm not trying to, you know, follow them around the house and pressure them or anything like that. I just try to form a connection, feed off of their energy, um, you know, just get them to like you because if they like and trust you, they'll do business with you. And so I've got, I've made a lot of connections with open houses 
think I've closed uh, maybe seven last year from open houses, but made a whole lot of connections. I try to talk to the neighbors around the open house that I'm doing, just getting out there and meeting people really. Definitely. And, and connection is a key word because I find that, you know, a lot of people are just focused on selling and they're not mm -hmm. focusing on connecting. And what people fail to realize is that the less you try and sell something and the more you try and connect on a deeper level with people, the higher you're going to convert because it doesn't seem like it's a transactional relationship. It's more exactly. of a transformational relationship, yes. right? You're just making friends and connecting with people. And um, I used I get lenders to sponsor every now and then. And we used to bring like food and refreshments, but we don't really do that anymore because I find that people don't want to come to an open house yeah. and eat food. Um, so we might have some bottle of waters and I started doing little um, cards with the Starbucks gift card, like a $5 coffee gift card for them to go get coffee while they're out looking at houses on a Sunday. And people love that. I actually got one client from it. She's like, nobody else gave me a coffee yeah. gift card with an open house. Yeah. So I think it's doing those little things that just adds, again, a really intimate, personal touch to show that you care because $5 across 20 people, that's a hundred dollars. That's not a huge exactly. investment. And again, I think it's, that's one of the things that has, has helped you thrive is that you look at things as an investment, not an expense. A lot of people will say, I don't want to lose a hundred dollars on these gift cards, but your mindset is more that hundred dollars could turn into a five or $10,000 commission. That's a pretty incredible return on your investment. Yeah. yeah I always try to give back. So Definitely. And people, and people like it. So looking at the open houses, I think the last thing I want to touch on before we get into how you created leverage as a mom, how were you actually getting these open houses? Because a lot of people might listen to the fact that you're selective, which I think is incredible and in what you should be doing. But how did you go about getting them? Did you contact, you know, other agents? Did you specifically reach out? Or what was your approach to actually getting these newly listed, freshly staged properties? So I do reach out to other agents. Um, I actually partnered with a, with another top producing agent. She's with a different brokerage. But um, I did a lot of open houses for her throughout the year because I just know when she lists a home, they look, they look really good. And she does professional pictures. She has everything in the documents section of the MLS with all the information of the house. I'm not having to call her for information. They're always staged beautifully, um, pristine condition, you know, which is what a home should be when you list it. So um, I've done a lot of those for her and then all my own listings too throughout the years I had them. Definitely. That's super powerful. So let's talk about Sphere because that kind of lends itself and is a good segue into Sphere because you've done really, really well at getting a ton of deals from your actual network in your Sphere. Mm -hmm. So looking at you know how you do this, we've talked about how you've built it, which is calling, networking, open houses, and that's how you've built your sphere. Now that you start to build it, what do you actually do to nurture your sphere to turn that into referrals or, or repeat clients or closed deals? Um, so like I kind of mentioned earlier, I do like to touch them throughout the year. I like to just send them, you know, check in text messages, call them every now and then, do pop buys for the holidays. Um I do like an Easter egg hunt for the kids for Easter. I did um, a fall mini photo session so my families could get updated pictures for Christmas, um, pie giveaway for Thanksgiving. So I really like to do client events and giveaways and pop buys and um, just touch them constantly throughout the year. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Seems and sort. Of course. And, and, are you doing this kind of, you know, through your CRM? Are you doing it kind of one, one to one and, and kind of just like reaching out for that, uh, you know, for any specific reason? Or is it just kind of, again, you have maybe on a daily basis after you do that two hours of prospecting, do you have like a window of time every single day where you write out maybe five names or 10 names? Or how do you go about actually picking the people to follow up with? So I just randomly pick them in my past clients list or my top 100. Um, I try to do like three a day, just, you know, call them, ask how they're doing um, after my lead generation, just so you can stay top of mind for them. Because not everyone's on social media, too. That's what you have to kind of remember as well, especially the older clientele. They're not they're not on social media, so they're not looking at all of that. So you really want to stay, stay on top of their mind for their referral base. 
Of course. And and you have done well with social media. So maybe, you know, just briefly before we dive into how you created leverage with the team, what is your approach to social media? Because I constantly see you on Facebook posting about, you know, open houses or new listed or just sold and all these different things. What does that look like for you in terms of your social media routine? And, and how do you think that has helped you with your production? So um, I was, you know, I have to leave the office at 2.15, so I don't really actually have time for social media. I it's I don't have time for any of that. So that's why I hired my VA. She's amazing. She created a content calendar. She does all of my posting. Um, I don't really even know what she's posting because I just try to, you know, focus on grinding and creating more business. So I kind of just handed all of that over to her. And when I do put a home under contract, I'll shoot it over to her and say, Hey, can you do a pending post on this? Can you do it just sold? Can you run an open house ad? Um, so leverage is key because otherwise I wouldn't have social media, anything, because there's just not enough time in the day with me have four children. So Definitely. Yeah, that that leverage point is going to be a good thing that we can dive into now, which is, you know, a perfect segue into that, you know, first off, what does your team now look like in terms of your core team that you operate with? So I have a marketing person who kind of works through um, KV Core with me. And then I have my virtual assistant in the Philippines, who is absolutely amazing. She does my TC work. Um, she does lead generating for me. She, you know, cleans up my email, responds to email, um, all of my social media. She's on Facebook, Instagram. Um, she started doing LinkedIn next door, which has been huge. We've generated a lot of leads from those two platforms. Um, so don't forget about LinkedIn and next door. We've made so many connections only in the last two months from just from that. So, um, and I have a showing assistant who does showings and inspections. Cool. So lean and mean, which I think is super cool because we did a video with Alexa earlier um, this year and, and she has something very similar, which is a lean and mean, highly profitable team, which is the VA showing assistant and then you. Um, and mm -hmm. a lot of people think that in order to create leverage, you need a ton of people and you need to have this big team and it needs to be a logistical nightmare. And it really doesn't. So, you know, mm -hmm. the first thing that a lot of people are going to be curious about is how did you actually find an incredible VA? So my, uh, I have, my brother-in-law is actually, actually an agent here too. Um, and we were just talking one day and he said he had hired a VA from the Philippines and it was through Cyberbacker. Um, I know there's a whole bunch of different companies that you can go through, but I was just kind of referred to Cyberbacker, so I decided to check them out. Um, I started with one, and you get like a three month trial with them. Um, the first one, she did she did an okay job, but she just she wasn't growing, she wasn't doing anything special. It was just kind of posting every day, and um, I just didn't find the value in her. So um, tried a second one out, interviewed a bunch of them. She had some social media real estate experience. So um, I took a chance with her and she has been absolutely amazing. We have a great uh, relationship. So she really helps me out a lot. I don't know what I would do without her. Yeah, that's super cool. And 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 then the showing agent. So maybe give a, a bit of context as to what does the showing agent do in terms of how they fit into your ecosystem to create leverage and save you time? And simultaneously, how did you find the showing agent? So my show engagement is actually um, my dad, and he is absolutely amazing. He got into real estate probably about a year ago, um, and he just he he's kind of retired, so he's not really wanting to grind like I am. So he's he always helps me. He hangs my signs for me. He goes put lock boxes on houses. He helps me stage, um, and he does a lot of my showings, a lot of my inspections. He's very personable, so people love him. Um, so it just really works out and we have a great relationship. So that's perfect. Keep it in the yeah. family. There's, there's nothing easier than that for finding yeah. somebody that's a good fit. So, you know, uh, another thing that people are always curious about with showing agents and, and again, it might be slightly different for you knowing that it is kept within the family, but structurally in terms of a commission split, what is the payment structure look like for the showing agent in your situation? So I paid for her hour. Um, should I, do you want me to say that? I normally pay $25 an hour for showings. Um, you know, inspections normally last about three hours. 
Um, so it works out. And that's kind of what I was paid when I was doing it because I was I was a showing assistant and TC. Um, so I just kind of went off of my hourly pay that I had back then. Definitely. I think that's a really cool kind of thing, knowing your past that, you know, with the with the fact that you've got the VA and now that you've got the showing agent, those are both kind of jobs that you've had experience with. So you're probably pretty good um, in order to set expectations, help people kind of guide through that process and, and really build momentum. So, you know, looking at this, looking at the future of where your business is going and the massive production that you're doing, I think the, the thing that I'd love to kind of unpack is your your message to moms in terms of let's say there's a part-time mom or a mom that you know is full-time but is maybe struggling with the balance of the family you know what are your best pieces of advice to any other moms that are out there that are maybe struggling to build momentum like you've been able to build so i just want to say it is possible um especially i want to talk to those moms that have multiple children like four and more um, cause our jobs are not easy. We juggle, we wear so many hats. We juggle it all. Most of the time, our husbands are not there to, you know, help in the mornings, help in the evenings. Um, I actually, um, I had a client that she was my client and then now she's no longer my client. And she kind of made a comment, but it was because I had four kids, um, and I wasn't able to hustle like someone else would have. And comments like that, they just made me want to work harder and prove you yeah. wrong. It is possible. You just have to be very intentional with your time and who you're giving it to. Um, and when you get to a level where you're, you know, you're selling a lot, people see that uh, lenders will reach out, uh, title companies, like coffees, lunches, all the time. Like you, you just have to say no to people. Um, if it's not making you money, it's not, it's not to be ugly. It's just, you have to be very intentional with your time. Um, you can't go to lunch with friends for two hours during the day while your kids are at school. Like you have to just do what you're supposed to do during the day, get your phone calls done, um, reach out to, you know, if you have five people to call, make your phone, make your five calls before you do anything else. Um, turn the lenders down for all these coffee dates. Um, so that's what I would suggest. Just be very intentional with your time. Yeah, that's that's time super block. powerful. Of course. Time block too. Yeah, time blocking. And, and again, that goes back to, I think, you know, the key word of being intentional is very powerful because um, you can get a lot done, but a lot of people kind of struggle with direction and actually making those hours productive. I think one of the, you know, final questions that I have um, is, you know, you probably face some, I don't know if you want to say objections, but maybe struggles with, you know, clients that have certain expectations of working X hours or being able to be present at X time, and you might not be able to do that. So what does the client relationship look like with you in terms of setting expectations as a mom of four, um, that's also a married wife, you know, if they're saying that they want you to be present here, or if they come with the objection that, that you're too busy with your family, how do you overcome that? Um, so I, I definitely try to be available to my clients when they need me. Um, I do have, you know, at eight o'clock, I'm not going to answer my phone and they know that. And most of the time they respect that. And if they don't, is it really a client that you're, you know, you want to work with? Um, cause I used to be afraid to tell people that I have four kids just because I did have a client made, make that comment. Well, she has so many kids. How does she have time to sell real estate? So sometimes I'm, I'm almost nervous to tell someone, but a lot of times, you know, moms buy houses all the time. They relate, they respect you for that even more, um, as a woman, because, you know, our jobs are hard. I'm not saying men's jobs aren't hard either, but we just, my kids are, I have my little one. He's sick a lot when he's sick. I'm the one taking off of work. I'm the one bringing him to the doctor. I'm the one having to work from home and make my phone calls and still be productive while taking care of a sick baby, which happened a lot last year. Um, so I think your clients would re will respect that. Most of mine do. They, un they understand. And I think it's also one of the things that comes down to the fact that usually you attract the type of people that you are. 
And, you know, there's, there's a lot of agents that have this false expectation where they want to work with everybody under the sun that has a heartbeat. And they don't think that it's also important when you're looking at scaling like you've done in order to work with the people that want to work with you, that understand you, because they're going to be the most seamless transactions because of that relatability and their understanding towards your position in business. So exactly. You know, yeah, I think they don't respect your time. You, you really, I, I personally wouldn't want to work with them. And it's just stressful and yeah, so... It's important to to guard your time to be, like again to to kind of pull a full circle like you're talking about is is being very intentional with your time guarding your time by setting proper expectations and boundaries to your clients so that they have an understanding that you are working you just have to work within the confines of a different structure that works for yeah. you and being able to scale that way and and again looking at the little wins that you've done along the way that compound into substantial wins over time as you're doing your prospecting on a daily basis you're doing your follow up on a daily basis and a lot of people you know unfortunately especially the newer agents or the part time agents make it seem like you have to hit these home runs all the time instead of the compound effect of just doing the simple things for extended periods of time very consistently so you know the final thing we always like to wrap up here with Carrie is you know people now have an opportunity to partner with you and there's going to be a lot of moms that I have no doubt want to talk to you and get a deeper understanding of how you can help them create leverage of their own time and help them build massively productive businesses like yourself. So, you know, why did you decide to come over here to EXP and the Wolfpack and what can people expect when partnering with you in order to get your help to, you know, help their production scale? Um, so I decided to join EXP because um, I was kind of, I was already watching your videos on YouTube and then um, another agent here that I was pretty close with she and she showed me all your videos and I just thought it was incredible what you were doing and within the Wolfpack and um, now we have a women of the Wolfpack group which is amazing a lot of moms in there we meet um, once a week on a Zoom call with the women so that has been incredible for me um, and just the support. Um, and I'm, and you know, EXP splits are pretty cool too. 80, 20, I was with Keller Williams before and, um, they have a much higher split. So anyway, um, I would just love to meet with any moms that are curious about how I went from being a TC part-time to full-time selling over 10 and a half million. I'd love to help you. Um, I relate to you. I understand what you're going through with, if you have, you know, a bunch of small young children at home. So Definitely. I think it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. And, and again, I just can't wait to see what you continue to do um, as you know, your men momentum builds and the fact that you've been able to, you know, guard your time and, and make it hyper productive. And I think that skill set translated to other people is going to change a lot of lives. And, and I, you know, again, guys, as always, I'm going to make sure to link all of Carrie's information below. You could book a call with her. Um, you could check out her social and, and be able to have that conversation because this is not only going to be a difficult year as it always is, being a parent, but it's going to be even more difficult looking at the market shift and having the incredible and beautiful opportunity to partner with somebody like yourself in a shifting market is going to be a huge competitive advantage for the people that decide to do that. So guys, as always, please make sure to check out all of Carrie's links below and chat with her if you want to know how to explode your business as a super mom. So thank you so much for Carrie uh, for coming on. Um, guys, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.